او الهيب ارثروبلاستي توتال هيب ارثروبلاستي اللي هو ان شاء الله هنبدا بيه بكره والدكتور اخونا الحبيب الفاضل استاذ دكتور احمد بي خميس هيكلمنا على البرنسبلز اوف توتال هيب ريبليسمنت ودي هتبقى مقدمه ل فيري سترونج كورس ان شاء الله على الهيب ارثروبلاستي دكتور احمد اتفضل يا دكتور احمد شكرا جزيلا دكتور محمد اتمنى ان صوتي يكون واضح واضح يا دكتور احمد ثانية واحدة دكتور واضح. جمال ممكن اقول حاجة يا فندم؟ اتفضل يا فندم اتفضل ايه انا شرف ليا الدكتور اسمه احمد رفعت بيه فانا مدحت رفعت فاحنا يعني هو <تصفيق> ابوك يعني, يعني, <تصفيق> يعني <تصفيق> كلنا كلنا يا اخوان اليوم اه اليوم التوك النهارده للعيلة عندنا وكلهم تلامذة حضرتك يا معالي الباشا ده شرف ليا يا فندم والله كلهم تلامذة حضرتك يا معالي الباشا الله يخليك ربنا يكرم عليك يا استاذ الله يكرم ربنا يكرم عليك شكرا جدا شكرا اتفضل 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 مع السلامة <تصفيق> شكرا دكتور محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم التوك about principles of total hip replacement طبعا هو الموضوع مش صغير بس مش كبير واي حد بيعمل hip replacement المفروض انه يكون ملم او يعني continuously بيراجع هذه principles لان في بعض الاحيان معظم الجراحين بيشتغلوا الهب يعني من السبكونشس ففي بعض البوينتس انا حبيت اعمل عليها ستريسز في هذه البرزنتيشن من غير اطاله يعني البوينتس الاساسيه اللي هتكلم عليها بروتيسيس ديزاين فوكس بسيطه اون هيستوري فيمورال ستيم ديزاين وشكله ازاي ذا بيرنج سيرفيسز بري اوبريتيف تمبليتنج الخطوه اللي يعني uh, غالبا غالبا بتتنسي Implant fixation زي بنثبت ال implants جوه سواء cementing techniques بال cement او ب biological fixation ومختلف انواع ال biological fixation stability of the uh, prothesis بعض important complications و hint عن revision arthroplasty اولا prothesis designs ال total hip عموما يتكون من femoral stem يتكون من head of the femur acetabular cup وبين between the head of the femur and the acetabular cup بتكون ال bearing surfaces femoral component may be cemented or cementless cementless component is press fit so it depends on the pressure or the impaction of the stem in the medullary canal different designs of the femoral stems موجودين وشركات كتير واسماء المفاصل نفسها كتير ده مش موضوعنا ولكن in general the main types of the femoral stems either tapered stems extensively porous coated stems or modular stems modular means the stem is composed of different parts according to the condition of the patient or the condition of the case itself the acetabular component also may be cemented or cementless And the bearing surfaces are the polyethylene acetabular liner, the inside part, and the metal uh, shell of the acetabulum with the uh, femoral head. Short focus on history, but two points in osteomorph prothesis, kullana arfim can awwal mafsal biatamad ala al principle of self locking. This was the first biological fixation. interdigitation of bone inside the holes ولكن طبعا كان في مشاكل زي ممكن يحصل loosening osteolysis ممكن loss of bone even على ال medial surface جون شارلي في الستينات كان اهم بوينت اهتم بيها هو low friction arthroplasty to decrease the wear which happens between friction of the two parts of the prothesis اللي هو الستيم والكب. So he used a small metal head and a polyethylene cup fixed with acrylic cement. Long term results were surprisingly high or even very excellent. وفي بيبر هعمل لها برزنتيشن دلوقتي هتوضح قد ايه المفصل ده depending on the low friction principle can surviving. Follow up at a minimum of 35 years. 35 years, Charlie 
البروثيسيس كان السرفايفل ريت بتاعهم 78% استعمال انواع مختلفه من الامبلانس برضو في في اللونج تيرم كان ليهم سرفايفل ريت كويس ولكن يعتمد على البيشنت ويعتمد على الكونديشن اوف ذا بون كونديشن اوف ذا كيس لو فريكشن ارثروبلاستي بعد 20 سنه سمنتد كان في without revision without revision success rate up to 84% the femoral stem زي ما قلنا ممكن يكون cemented or cementless actually formed from cobalt chrome alloy cobalt chrome alloy reduces the stresses on the cement or it's from titanium alloy but titanium controls some micro motion وبعد فترة طويلة بيكون في دي بوندنج يعني تشينجز ان ذا انسايد ستراكشر او الماتيريال اوف ذا تيتانيوم. ذا سيمنتد ستيم ذا سيمنتد ستيم ماست بي سمولر ذان ذا بريس فيت ستيم تو ريزيست ذا بندنج مومنتس اللي هم ممكن يؤدوا الى ستيم بريكج زي الصورة اللي موجودة في اقصى اليمين دي. The press fit femoral stems يعتمدوا على impaction inside the medullary canal by the compression hoop. Initial stability by the compression and later on by the biological fixation. Biological fixation means that the bone will grow on the implant which is manufactured in a certain way that allows this. This will be discussed. Either hydroxy apatite coated or porous coated or grid blasted, and the differences between these I will show later on. The main problem of the press fit femoral stems, or one of the main problems, is that it's under reaming, it needs impaction under reaming, and during the impaction of the implant, there might be intraoperative fracture. Later on, there might be some loosening or corrosion that could happen between two sides of two different types of metal. This is only with the modular stems. About the bearing surfaces between the femoral implant head and the acetabular cup, we have different types. We have metal head on polyethylene liner, which is very common to be used. Metal on metal Uh, surfaces, bearing surfaces, ceramic on ceramic, which is also used, especially in young patients, ceramic on polyethylene, titanium on polyethylene. كل واحدة من دول كبيرنج سيرفيس ليها advantages و disadvantages. In general, the highest modularity and lowest cost موجودين مع metal heads on polyethylene liner. ولكن مشكلتهم ان في high rate of wear and if we use a small head there will be some impingement between the neck of the prothesis and the soft tissues or near around the step metal on metal مشكلتهم في metal loses and the hypersensitivity but if we use the large head size with the metal on metal there will be more range of motion ceramic on ceramic is brittle It's expensive, brittle, causing squeaking, يعمل صوت, where less modular than the others. الصورة دي بتقول إنه it's very brittle, مشكلة الأساسية في السراميك والسراميك إنه ممكن يحصل head fracture. أنواع ال corrosion, مش corrosion, أنواع ال some abrasions, ممكن تحصل زي pencil marks, or here some area of increased stresses on the ceramic. is evident especially on that. Templating pre-operative قبل العملية ده very important ودي الخطوة المهمة اللي فيه جراحين كتير يعني actually بي bypass الخطوة دي مع انها في غاية الأهمية ليه في غاية الأهمية؟ لأنها بتحدد حاجات كتير قوي طبعا لازم ناخد اكس rays تكون واضحة جدا pelvis both hips AP view و lateral view, good lateral view for the hip. The most important points that could be delineated from the uh, preoperative templating are the centers of rotation of the acetabulum and the head of the femur, 
the position that where the cup will be inserted and the leg length that needs to be corrected if there is any discrepancy. Placing the center of rotation or restoring the normal center of rotation according to the contralateral normal side is very important. If we change it, the position of the center of rotation of the new hip, there will, there will be lengthening or shortening according to the faulty position of the center of rotation. Also by templating, we can choose the appropriate sizes of the cup and for the stem, the appropriate size and the appropriate also orientation of the cup and the position of the stem. The stem should fill the medullary canal and the cup should be in 40 degrees abduction. The medial border of the cup should be very close to the iliosacral line or the teardrop and the inferior border should be near the, the inferior border of the teardrop. Again, restoration of the center of rotation and marking the site of the neck resection level according to the approach that is used. In anterior approach, we rely on the saddle area, which is this area here at the base of the greater trochanter and junction of the neck. And in the posterior approach, we rely by the lesser trochanter, depend on the level of the lesser trochanter to define the level of the neck resection. How do we fix the implants? They are old for owl and no fixation is cemented or biological. The cement is not a glue. We all know that the cement is filling the gap between the bone and the implant. Presence of osteopenia mandates the use of cement because there will be no enough bone to interdigitate with the holes or the valleys and hills on the uh, inserted stem. The biological fixation depends on the fitting, very well fitting of the implant. So it can femoral stem or acetabular cup inside the bone, which is line to line fixation. How can ubardu da muhem fil preoperative preparation? How can we know that we will use a cemented or cementless implant? Door classification defines the thickness of the cortical bone, endosteal cortical bone in the upper femur to give a guideline to use either cemented or cementless implant. If the distance between the two inside borders of the proximal femur at the level of the lesser trochanter and the other level is 10 centimeters more distal, if the submission or the division of this distance is less than 0 0.75, we must use a cemented implant because this means like here in type C that the medulla is wide. In the other two types, any numbers more than this, more than 0 0.75, you can use a cementless implant. In this x-ray, demonstrating this type A, which is near normal. This is a good medulla and the cortices are seen in the AP and the lateral views. So we can use a cementless prothesis. And here it's in between type C, we must use a cemented prothesis because the medulla is very wide. The cemented techniques change it through three generations from mixing the cement by hand and finger packing to using the cement gun and under vacuum and the pressurization. The main idea behind is to improve the cement bone prothesis interface and increase or optimize the degree of fixation by decreasing the porosity or the any bubbles in the cement and provide a cement mantle more than two millimeters all around the stem with no defects. This allows good stability. There is a classification, Barak and Harris, this is post-operative classification for, if you want to know the degree, your degree of cementing, and this may give indication, an indirect indication about later on there will be loosening or no loosening. 
هل الاسمنت مالي حوالين كل المفصل وايت اوت اور اقل اور اقل ولا في جروس راديو ليوسنسي ذيس از ذا وورست ديجري اند ذير از نو سيمنت اراوند ذا ستيم ويتش مينز ذات ذا ستيم از نوت فيكسد فيري ويل ذا بايولوجيكال فيكسيشن allows the bone to grow in micropores or on vils and halis on the great plastic implant. In this picture, we can see some demonstration of this. These are the small pores covering the metal stem and the bone grows in between these pores allowing fixation. The, th the sizes of the pores are very different and the shapes of the pores also are different. Some, some manufacturers are not using only pores, they are using some fiber mesh bonding together with this. This is used on the acetabular part and on the femoral side. Optimization of this form of bone in growing or on growing is by playing with the pores of uh, the surface. As long as increasing the size of the pores, increasing the size of the pores and the percentage of the surface that's covered with the pores, this increases the degree of bone fixation or the biological fixation that will happen. Increasing the contact between the stem and the inside bone also increases the degree of bone fixation of the implant that will happen. If we have a very well fixed cementless implant, this means that it is very rigid fixation. And this very rigid fixation might cause some problems as it causes some bone reactions that might stimulate later on some osteolysis of the nearby bones. However, in the post-operative X-ray, we can know if this cementless implant is fixed in a good way or in a bad way. We have some signs like the spot welds here, these points of industrial new bone formation that can be seen in the X-rays in the follow-up periods. And there is no radiolucency around the implant and the implant is very well fitting inside and it is not subsiding inside the medullary canal. It's not going deep, sunken inside or going out. The same regarding the cups. You can define if the cup is fixed in position, there is no radiolucency around. And if we use screws for fixation of the cup, the screws are intact in place. The effect of porosity of the bone affects, of course, the mechanical integrity of the bone cement interface, which means resistance of the loosening by the implant depends greatly on the ability of the cement to fill the intertrabecular spaces in between. One more thing regarding the other paper is that if there is micro motion due to decreased uh, the technique uh, perfection or there is some loosening inside with the micro motions this causes fibrous tissue to grow not bone to grow on the implant and this causes loosening later on the next point is to talk about the stability of the implant not kalimna ala designs of the implant kalimna ala fixation تكلمنا على ثالث نقطة هنتكلم عليها هي stability of the implant. How can we keep the implant inside the bone stable position? This depends on two main points. Depends on the implant itself regarding its design and the position. And depending on the soft tissues surrounding the implant regarding their tension and the function. Regarding the implant design, if we use larger heads, this means more range of motion, and this means lo longer distance to jump outside the cup, longer distance for the head to jump outside the cup. 
this is good for stability. Increase the head to neck diameter and not using any skirts to increase the length of the head. Also, this increases the range of motion as described here. If we are using skirts or the designs with head skirts allowing less range of motion than those without head skirts. Increasing the head diameter as in here, the size of the head allows more arc of motion inside the acetabulum because there will be no early impingement of the neck on the acetabulum that occurs with the shorter heads. This is regarding the stem designs, regarding the cup design to increase the stability. We can use elevation of the rim, cups with elevated rim, like here in this figure, cup with oblique rim, which is also elevated on one side less than uh, more than the other one, or a cup with a more lateralized outer border, like these designs, elevated rim or more lateralized outer border. يبقى أول حاجة اتكلمنا عنها هو الـ implant design regarding stability، تاني حاجة regarding stability هو implant position، proper position وده يرجعنا تاني للنقطة المهمة جدا وهو pre-operative templating which is very important. The cup, the cup of the acetabulum must be in about 20 to 25 degrees antiversion and about 40 degrees in abduction. أي تغيير في الـ orientation of the cup هيكون ليه implication on the stability of the implant, which means if the cup is more abducted than it's supposed to be, the ED, vertical cup or near vertical cup, there will be posterior dislocation. Well, axe, low canital cup more abducted or horizontal, there will be inferior dislocation. Mish bas keda. Male oriented cup also accelerates the wear rate. So the head will cause more fraction of the pulley and this causes more wear and more aseptic loosening that could occur. If we are fixing the cups with the screws, like here in this X-ray, we must know about where we should put the screws in the safe zones of the acetabulum regarding the very important neurovascular structures that are on the inner wall of the, of the pelvis. We have two lines, one line extending from the anterior superior iliac spine to the center of the acetabulum, and the other line is perpendicular to the first line. The red line, this is the first line, and the blue line is the second line. The safest zone is the upper zone, the upper, so the upper uh, which is called the posterior superior zone. Anyway, it's the upper zone. The other zones are dangerous except the posterior inferior zone, this zone. Each zone has the very important neurovascular structures behind. Even the safe zone is not very safe. The superior gluteal nerve and the vessels are close to here and also the sciatic nerve in some area. So do not put screws here, do not put screws here. You can put safely the screws here of proper length of the screws and you may you may put the screws here in this area of the stem for the stem of course it must be antiverted to the femoral condyles about 10 to 15 degrees the other aspect of the stability of the implant regarding the soft tissues soft tissue tension and offset relation of the soft tissue tension to the offset which is the medial offset of the femoral stem of the femoral prothesis and the medial offset is the distance between the center of the femoral head and the longitudinal axis of the femur increasing the offset or decreasing the neck shaft angle increasing the offset or decreasing the neck shaft angle, which means put the neck shaft angle in slide virus. This causes increase in the tension or proper tension of the abductors, which are very important for the hip stability. 
One more thing to increase the tension in the abductors is to lateralize the greater tuberosity and osteotomize and refix it in a lateral, slightly distal position. The idea is to increase the tension of the abductors. Not only the tension of the abductors should be preserved or increased, but also the function of the abductors. So we have those patients that who had before a previous hip surgery or had weak muscles due to any cause or had malignancy in this area, and they are supposed to have total hip for any reason or infection in this area. All these patients will have weak muscles or improper function of the muscles. The improper function of the hip muscles is reflected by the trend Lindbergh test and also the neuromuscular function or the integrity of the nerve supply to the abductor muscles is very important, superior gluteal and the inferior gluteal nerves. This integrity either from the central area or from the peripheral, the nerve itself. Some review about the main complications or that could happen with total hip replacement. Dislocation could happen due to technical or due to non-technical problems. Periprothetic fracture that could happen intraoperative, especially with the cementless implants. Wear or aseptic loosening, inequality of the leg lens nerve injury, especially the sciatic nerve, impingement of surrounding soft tissues, mainly the iliopsoas tendon, heterotopic ossification, like in any surgery near a joint, especially the hip, squeaking with the ceramic on ceramic implants, hypersensitivity reaction or metallosis, which is called pseudotumor and detected by MRI in the metal, in the metal on metal or uh, metal on metal uh, prothesis. Regarding the dislocation, it's due to, as I said, a technical error, and it could be anterior dislocation or posterior dislocation during any position that necessitates that the patient could have marked extension and external rotation if we use the uh, anterior aspect or market flexion and the internal rotation, adduction, if you use the posterior aspect. Dislocation is more in the first post-operative year and the rate of dislocation decreases gradually later on. If there is previous hip surgery, yeah, and it predisposing the factors, added either weakness of the soft tissues or any abnormal anatomy of the area or any technical errors like not proper offset, not proper head neck ratio, where that could happen in the prothesis. All these together with old age can lead to dislocation. If we got a dislocated hip or dislocated total hip replacement, it should be reduced under general anesthesia and put the patient in, in immobilizer. Then we recheck the condition with good follow up. If the patient had two or more dislocations, there must be malalignment of the inserted implant and aware of the implant and the revision is required. Periprothetic fractures as one of the complications, they might usually maybe be intraoperative with cementless implants where Vancouver classification be a simhum roughly ila three main types, fractures in the metaphysis, fractures in the diaphysis, or fractures distal to the tip of the stem. Treatment is intraoperative, fixation of this part if it is going to be displaced or it's a complete crack, this depends on the surgeon decision. If it's a small crack, no need for fixation and continue with your operation. If it's displaced or going to be displaced, it must be fixed with cables, fixed with uh, uh, changing the type of the implant, which is very unusual in this condition because usually it happens during the impaction. If it happens distal to the implant, we must use a plate for this 
and fixing with screws or multiple cables. Peripathetic fracture post-operative is usually due to some wear or trauma could happen, and it depends here on the stability of the implant. The treatment descends, depends on the stability of the implant. If the implant is stable, we are fixing, focusing the treatment on the fracture itself. If the implant is unstable, there must be revision of the implant using a longer one, femoral stem, and fixing the fracture. Wear or aseptic loosening is an inflammatory reaction. We have three types of wear that could happen with the artificial hip. It's adhesive or abrasive or a third body wear. Adhesive means the polyethylene sticks to the hip. The abrasive means the head is scraping off the polyethylene. And the third body, it could be anything else than these. The loosening could be in the whole cup, which is called the volumetric. It takes the whole volume of the cup or takes one area, one point in a linear fashion, which is linear loosening. Stages of the wear, it passes in four stages. There will be formation of debris particles. These debris particles size differs according to the bearing surface. The least debris particles are with the ceramic, on ceramic. Okay, and the biggest one is the non-cross-linked ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. The type of the particles depends on the bearing surface, as I said. These particulate debris will initiate inflammation mediated by the macrophages through inflammatory cytokines, and this causes stimulation of the osteoclasts, and the stimulation of the osteoclasts causes osteolysis. The osteolysis increases the potential or the reactive joint space and causes the particles to spread in more than the initial areas where they started and also increases the reactive fluid that's formed which increases the hydrostatic pressure and there will be a vicious circle of spreading of the particles in the joint. السور دي بتوضح أمثلة اللي هنا البوليثيلين في إيروجن أو في وير على one area, pencil scratches, metal on uh, uh, metal part of the uh, cup on the head of the uh, uh, ceramic, and metal on metal, see what this degree of erosion that causes severe metal loss. To treat the aseptic loosening implant, we must define some landmarks to guide the treatment. So this aseptic loosening is not universal or fixed in all cases. We can say that all cases have aseptic loosening should be treated by this direction. It depends mainly on the area affected by the aseptic loosening. And of course, we have classifications mentioned for this. I will not go through the deep details of this, but roughly it depends on the how much of the femur or how much of the acetabulum is affected by the bone loosening or bone loss in the hospital. كل ما زاد area of the bone loss, كل ما كان ده reflected على a type of implant that will be used for revision. So starting from this this type, the first type, we can use a stem that's proximally coated only and to be fixed, to be revising this part. Increasing the degree of coating or increasing the length of the stem is gradually increasing with increase the severity of the bone loss till we can reach, we will reach to using a oncology prosthesis for revision of this type of the severe unsupportive aseptic loosening of this type of the femur. Also for the acetabulum, 
Also for the acetabulum, there are different types of implants with flanges or with increase the number and the direction of the screws or using a mesh to restore the floor in any loosening, we'll see this. Regarding also another point of the complications, which is the leg length inequality, we'll stress on two points. It's the length of the neck and the neck shaft angle or the uh, offset. If we use a short neck, this will make short muscles. If we use a long neck, this will make the muscles, the abductor muscles under tension. So it's desired to use long neck than to use short neck. The other point is the offset of the proximal femur. If the offset is short, this makes the abductors also lax. And if the offset is long, this makes the abductors under tension, and this is desired. But there is no effect of the offset on the length of the limb postoperatively. So the offset either increased or decreased will not affect the limb length. But the length of the neck will affect the limb length. If we use a longer neck, there will be more tight muscles and there will be lengthening of the leg. If we use the short neck, there will be short muscles and there will be uh, shortening of this limb. We should note that there is during the first three to six months after the operation, there will be some functional transient leg length inequality. This is transient and it will be corrected later on. Regular follow-up x-rays are very important. As I said, increase in the femoral offset has no effect on the length. Treatment of leg length inequality, rarely we rely on revision to correct leg length inequality. If there is unfortunately leg length inequality, we should depend mainly on lifting the shoe to balance the length of the two limbs. But this should be after six months to allow relaxation of the muscles. Regarding revision, Revision for bone defects or revision for infection or revision for uh, after fractures, it's a very big topic, but I will stress on just revision for the presence of bone defects, bone defects either in the acetabular side or on the femoral side. This type of revision depends on the type of the bone defect. If it's only segmental, taking part of the wall of the estabulum or taking the whole cavity of the estabulum, if it's associated with a fracture, which is discontinuity, or if it's not associated with a fracture. Also on the femur part, if it's only taking the proximal part of the femur, taking how much distance from the middle of the femur, if it's male fixed implant, like in here. And also it depends on this classification by Paproski and the American Academy for defining the cause or classifying the options of treatment for this. In cases of revision, take Good x-rays, we should take CT scan to see the extent of the osteolysis. And of course, we should check and test for the possibility of the presence of infection. Regarding the femoral revision, as long as the bone defect is smaller in the earlier degrees of bone loss, we should replace the primary component with another component increase the distance of the bone loss again in revision means that you are going to use a longer implant or you can add a strut graft that can be fixed with circlage or cables strut allograft if there is very massive bone loss and you cannot restore anything and the patient is very elderly or very low demanding we will rely on a cemented stem. Revision for the acetabular part with the different types of the flanged acetabular cups or the hemispherical mega cups 
for the acetabulum to restore any bone loss. And in some cases, we are combining revision of the femur and the acetabulum together. We have different scores for evaluation of the functions of the hip. The most common are the Harris hip score, Oxford hip score, and Merrill Dubkin score. We'll not talk in details about this. This is the Harris uh, hip score. Using cement in cement. In revision, if you are not able to completely remove the cement, you can put another cement on the already present one and the results after five years according to this paper are not bad. Ceramic on ceramic bearing surfaces, they have uh, their advantages and disadvantages and there is a good evidence that the latest generations are giving very good results, but using a smaller size hip in a patient who is obese will increase the risk of ceramic fracture. The results of the long-term stability and uh, the durability of the cross-linked polyethylene means if it's used for uh, aluminum ceramic on cross-linked polyethylene, there will be some increase in the durability on the long term. It's not bad. Early mortality after uh, cemented compared to cementless total hips, there is no supportive, no supportive information more than what we know about the risks of the cementing and the intraoperative period or the postoperative period over the cementless implants. In summary, hip surgery, the state of art, we should rely mainly on the basic principles regarding templating, patient choice, and the design and the method of fixation of the implant to achieve good results. And this operation was denominated as the operation of century on the Lancet. And uh, we need to say that it's continuous work, continuing since the 1960s and with great advantage in the biotechnology and the manufacturing of the different types of the hips allows better materials and the designs to be found and together with the invention or the advantage of the minimally advanced minimally invasive surgery or the robotic computer assisted surgery allows accurate placement of the implants so we still need some further development in this aspect to decrease the cost effectiveness of this operation thank you very much shukran gazilan akhi habib ustaz doctor أحمد خميس على التوك الرائع ده أنت ببساطة يا دكتور أحمد لخصت كل المحاضرات اللي هتتقال في الكورس يعني أنت ديت أونلاين أوتلاين على كل حاجة بصراحة تمام تمام الحمد لله فده كان توك أكتر من رائع منك يا دكتور أحمد العفو فندم العفو الله يخليك وده المتوقع منك طبعا إن شاء الله دكتور محمد ده من زوح دكتور سعد any questions لدكتور أحمد uh, uh, oh, yeah. Yes, there is one question for Dr. Ahmed. Uh, do we choose the long or short neck uh, to control uh, the offset? Dr. Ahmed. Do, do we choose uh, long or short neck to control the offset? I think he's asking about, about the rule of uh, the length of the neck and controlling uh, the offset. الرول of the neck in controlling the offset زي ما كان في السلايد اللي هي بتتكلم على التنشن of the soft tissues انا وضحت النقطه وقلت ان النيك لينث اوكي لو استعملنا شورت نيك بيخلي المصل شورت بيخلي الليج شورت ايوه فور ذا ابدكتورز ولكن 
انت لما بتستعمل شورت نك هيقلل الاوفست شويه تمام لو انت استعملت لونج نك هيزود الاوفست بس ده معناه ان انت هتقلل النك شافت انجل تمام يعني زي الصوره دي انت ممكن تستعمل شورت نك مع النورمال انجل اوكي هتقلل الاوفست ممكن تستعمل لونج نك بس غير النك شافت انجل علشان تحافظ على الاوفست مش عارف كده الامور واضحه ولا لا Yes, uh, yes, I think it's clear, clear enough. I think he's asking about uh, the rule of uh, the neck. When you use a long neck, uh, you make uh, the abductors more, uh, uh, you increase the tension inside the abductors. And this uh, assists in stability for uh, the total hip. I think he's asking about this. Oh, يعني in relation to the abductors. Yes, yes, I think so, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Another... Yes, there's another question from Wael. Uh, just to clarify the difference between the dual mobility and the triple mobility. I think this is outside our scope. يعني هو هو احنا لو هنتكلم على ال dual mobility و triple mobility احنا هنتكلم على بس basic principles واحنا لو هنتكلم على ال designs بتاعت كل نوع من انواع المفصل هيبقى الموضوع فيه يعني يطلع بره الحكايه شويه. Yes sir. I think uh, no more questions. Thanks a lot, Dr. Ahmed. Laf, laf, shukran fun. Dr. Ahmed, wa ajmal haga fi al-kurs da in nahna bintshuf ikhwatna ili baqalna fatra ma shufna homsh. Laf, wa Dr. Muhammad, katar khir. Yani, wujud hadratak ma'ana, wujud Dr. Muhammad Salah Sharaf, wa kulli ikhwatna ili homa ghaibin a'annina bas hadrin ma'ana fi al-kurs, bsaraha da sharaf lina in nahna najjamma' tani kullina ma' ba'd yani. واحنا والله دكتور محمد مبسوطين جدا بالنشاط الجميل ده وان احنا بنشوف حضرتك ونسمع صوتك. الله يخليك يا دكتور احمد. شكرا جزيلا استاذ دكتور فيه. احمد خميس على المحاضره الرائعه وشكرا جزيلا استاذ دكتور مدحت رفعت على المحاضره الرائعه. احنا هنقابل حضراتكم بكره ان شاء الله 10 بي ام مع علم من اعلام الهيب سيرجري في مصر ورائد من رواد الهب ارثروبلاستي في مصر استاذ دكتور بروفيسور تيمور الحسيني بروفيسور اوف ارثوبيدك سيرجري عن شمس يونيفرستي في محاضره شيقه جدا عن السمنت التوتال هب وهو استاذنا دكتور تيمور بي طلب ان المحاضره دي تبقى ان ميموريال ميموريال ليكتشر فور بروفيسور نبيل خليفه رحمه الله عليه فهنسعد بكره بوجودنا مع استاذنا استاذ دكتور تيمور الحسيني ونشوف حضراتكم بكره الساعة 10 بالليل إن شاء الله وليلة سعيدة لكم جميعا شكرا دكتور محمد 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 شكرا دكتور مح